Tonight on Reality Reflex, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star 6. These queens are putting on a fierce, delicious halftime show and a shocking exit. Hey everybody, it is Tedley here and going into tonight's episode, the show was pumping up the fact that Jan felt underestimated by all the queens. So when they played the dramatic music at the beginning like they always do, they just showed Jan saying that she is going to stand out amongst all these queens. I honestly just press play and hope for the best. <laughs> there was no mini challenge this week, so RuPaul just came out with the main challenge, which just happens to be the halftime something. Which just happens to be the Hall of Fame halftime show. Each queen is going to perform as a real female celebrity. So Beyonce, Stevie Nicks. Oh, not Stevie Nicks this time, thank God. So here's my picks for the top three performances of the week. Number three for me was Jan's Lady Gaga. Now, her opening intro on the piano was perfectly Gaga. It was exactly everything the fans know and love about her. There were some times when I felt like the Jan still came out over Lady Gaga, but I really honestly think that she was giving her all. She was really doing it to win her revenge in the Jan to see. <laughs> Number two for me, for the best, was Trinity K. Bonet, who did a fierce fucking Beyonce. Now, firstly, she came out and actually slayed giving real Beyonce looks for a second, like I had to do a double take. Like, I definitely had to look twice to be like, oh shit, this ain't the real Beyonce. And then she got into it and she knew all the dance moves. She knows exactly what Beyonce is gonna do. And so she did it with perfection. The best Beyonce that we've ever seen on the show. Now, can someone just do it successfully in the Snatch Game? Now, number one for me for this week was Akira as Prince. Now, as Akira was performing, I saw all the princisms. And let me just say, I'm not putting Akira in the first place because I just happened to work at Paisley Park for a day. But I will say that despite the fact that I'm Minnesotan as well, the Prince performance was amazing. It was perfect to me. And sure, that booty was maybe a little more thicker than the real Prince, but he was, you know, a skinny little broom or whatever. So it made sense. But so I totally think Akira killed the challenge. And now here's my bottom three queens of the week. All right, number three for the worst queens of the week, I did put Ginger Minjus Fergie, just because Ginger was still doing a good Ginger performance, but I was not getting enough Fergie out of it. Like I thought it was cute and she kind of kept up, but she should have pumped it up even more. Number two for me for the lowest this week is Yara Sophia. Like, I really didn't feel she was giving it 100% the whole time. We all know that she's crazy and wild and she can really take it there, so this was like a number five for her out of 10. Like, she really could have, you know, pumped it up, been the crazier character she's been this whole time on the show, but it seemed relatively subdued, especially coming from the titties, titties, jiggle those titties. Number one for me this week was actually Eureka as Madonna because sure she had a couple things in there like the tooth gap but honestly like I just don't think that her number had enough dance moves for Madonna like Madonna's a huge dance queen of course and so like just seeing her performance compared to like Jan as Lady Gaga a similar diva queen performer and it just wasn't the same like and it wasn't enough like we know that Eureka can at least do a good split so I was hoping for a little more there so that's why Eureka was kind of my bottom this week and now for my shadiest moments of the week the number three shadiest moments was not just one moment but if you look really closely through the episode old Raja is coming back with her shady underhanded comments Number two for the shadiest moment of the week was the very end of the episode when somebody just straight up said, fuck all of you. Whatever, bitch. And number one shadiest moment for me was when RuPaul was laughing about waiving his music fees. Well, that is just so interesting. I'm gonna go get another cocktail. <laughs> and now let's talk about the runway. And remember everybody, I only talk about the outfits I like. I don't talk about all the outfits. So these are just the standout, beautiful garments in my opinion. The first one to come out that I really loved was Ginger Minj's, you know, little whorehouse on the prairie look or whatever she calls it. It was really fabulous. It looked super frilly, fun, and she looked gorgeous. The hair was amazing. It was just so beautiful. And the makeup was so nice to see on her like this. Just like Michelle said, don't change a thing now, girl. 
Up next for me was for Eureka O'Hara. It was a little bit of her Tennessee hometown mixed in with some Madonna from the 2000 music era. It was definitely flamboyant, that's for sure. And it was Eureka, so it was larger than life. And it was just gorgeous. And she looks so beautiful. She looks so beautiful. Up next for me was Yara Sophia, who I'm surprised they didn't bring this up. She had a similar hairdo style from All Stars 1, except she was giving a little more goth visually. So maybe that's why she got a little pass or something, but she has done this hair in the past. So I just wanted to call that out and you know keep everybody honest here because she has done that before. However, this was still a, such a glamorous look anyways. It was completely different style than the first time she did this hair. So it was really just beautiful. Showed off her waist, which she still has after all this time. So you know what? Who can fault her for looking this fabulous? They eat her up every single time. Then I have Trinity K. Bonet, and she just looks so fabulous. Like, she kind of looks like how when Sasha Bell was a crab, like this is her best friend, the salmon next door. Like this was just, I mean, it was really glamorous. It also looks like a little bit of human muscle or bacon. Girl, why am I reading these looks? But this was really good and I loved it. It was a beautiful dress for Trinity K. Bonet. Then comes out a curia as a beautiful flower that has real blossoms coming out. Watch out, Courtney, because your gig's getting stolen and having a big old outfit up on the runway. And then she even could like reveal more that the like ensemble dissipates some and then it turns into like a skirt thing and then it's just one beautiful flower at the top. Now this is a high concept, fabulous outfit. This is the kind of shit you want to see on Drag Race you know, going forward here because we've seen it all. We've seen every gown. We've seen, you know, this and that. We need to see the standout looks that just take it to the next level. And Queen, this is it. And now we're coming to the elimination breakdown. So spoiler alert, if you don't want no spoilers, if you, I mean, well, you've seen most of this shit already, but if you want to save the elimination for just yourself and just your own personal jam to see, this would be the time to stop the video. But for the rest of us, we're gonna go over all the tea and all the shade. So it turns out that Jan officially won this challenge, which gives her the redemption she has been waiting for, her quote unquote Jan Detta. And the bottom two, really unfortunately, because they both have been doing well in their own respects, was a Curiously Davenport and my personal favorite, Yara Sophia, who was fabulous on season three and All Stars 1. You know, she was maybe a little crazy this time, but still, did she have to go to the bottom? I don't know. Rigor Morris, girl! It was Rigor Morris! Now, this lip sync assassin has been such a long-waited moment for us fans for a long time. I've been wondering, where is this bitch? Why won't she come back? Why don't they put her back on the show? Mmm, I love that drink. I'm like, where is this bitch? Jessica Wilde finally comes on the stage looking gorgeous as fuck, by the way, as the fabulous drag queen she's always been since season two. Like, they really need to put her on All Stars. Next, please. So I was so thrilled to see Jessica being the bottom is not so bad wild. So it turned out that Jessica Wilde truly came back for her revenge because she lip synced the fuck out of that song. She was not about to lose. She was like, bitch, cast me, okay? And so Jessica Wilde took it home only to send home her good friend, Yara Sophia. So unfortunately, both Jessica and me feel the same about this elimination because I truly love Yara and I really just am sad that she got this edit and she was sent home like this because she is fabulous and she is the queen. She is seriously to me just like what Alexis Mateo was season five all stars. Like she really should have taken it home. I don't know, there's so many good queens this time, but that's just my desperate sad opinion because I'm sad she went home. But anyways, after all that, let's go back to the beginning. So the opening drama, did it turn out to be anything or not? This time it did, because at the beginning, Jan was saying she was the underdog that needs to stand out, and bitch, you came through. She may not have won that money at the end, but she had her victory moment, so you take what you can get, Jan. But so anyways, I give this episode three out of five RuPaul statues. I'll see you guys next time. 